Hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan. And I'm Matthew Lucas. And we post a video every week on a Friday. So why not press subscribe and the alert button so that you'll remember each week when our next video comes up. So that you too can become a horticulturalist like Stephen. Well, and <laughs> if you've got a question for Stephen, oh, yes. put it in the comments below. And every Monday we do a short when you well, you don't attempt, you do answer people's questions. Yes, in 60 seconds. And don't forget <laughs> to put where you're from so that I have some context for the question as well. Now, Stephen, we're sitting under a dappled light arbor. What yeah. are we going to talk about? All right, well, our American <laughs> viewers yeah. are more than aware of a term, zonal denial. Mm -hmm. now, in America, the climate is zoned so that if you're zone eight, you've got a certain climate. If you're zone six, you've got a certain climate. Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful in assessing your climate to work out what plants you can grow in your zone. Yes. So in America, most books say it's zone eight or zone seven or zone three or whatever. In Australia, we don't have a zonal system. No. Um, and if we did, it would have to be sort of a slight different type of one because it's often more about the heat and arid and how arid an area is more so than what sort of cold levels we go down to so mm. it'd have to be quite different sort of system mm. but we still sort of live in zonal denial nonetheless we do. denial not a river in egypt as yes. they say yeah so we're here to talk ladies <laughs> and gentlemen about zonal denial and we are under the shade mm. of exhibit a yes stephen Let's go through your zonal denial All right. one by one. So what is above us? Well, the tree that's above us is a tree from Mexico mm -hmm. called a Wigandia, yeah. uh, Wigandia urens. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a moderately large shrub slash small tree with huge paddle like leaves. It gets beautiful heads of mauve flowers in the late spring mm. and this is my third attempt ah. to grow a wigandia because here we do get substantial frosts at least for australia in the winter mm. and i've twice tried to grow it before it's gone into the first winter and just disappeared mm. this one is now a substantial and elderly plant really it's mm. been in the ground 10 15 years mm. uh, it frosts on a regular basis it gets cut back but because it's got a nice big woody trunk underneath it although it gets frosted down it's got enough woodiness underneath and it will refurbish itself every year so a few things then firstly where is this from mexico yes but not not all that high up in the mountains so okay. yeah so you know subtropical Mex subtropical right um and it grows in virtually frost-free environments where it comes from. Mm. It's reasonably drought tolerant, I have to say. Because this grows down in Melbourne. I've got one in a pot that, that's actually in bloom. So if mine has some flowers, I'll drop the, the images yeah. in. But let's get back to that point about the woody trunk. Yeah. So if you're fortunate enough to get a couple of years of mild winters, the plant gets a bit of a, yes. a rocket on. It starts to develop some substance. It's then mm -hmm. more able to um, survive frosts yeah. if it's already got a substantial trunk with woody material. Yeah, of course, we could still have the one in a hundred year event, mm. which seemed to happen quite regularly these days. <laughs> Every uh, second year. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you can still come unstuck with, with growing these plants that are very borderline mm. uh, in your climate. Mm. But nonetheless, it's more than worth the effort if you've got something as spectacularly interesting as a Wigandia to grow in the garden. Mm. And now I feel comparatively confident that I will always have this Wigandia and uh, I will also have lots of its babies because it now suckers quite strongly around I the garden. I have noticed that mine suckers like there's no tomorrow. Mm. Now yours isn't in bloom. Mine mm, either still is or was. Yeah. So is that a seasonal issue up here that it doesn't get enough warmth to bloom before winter occurs? No, it normally flowers. If it doesn't get frosted badly, it will mm. normally flower in the late spring. Right. So if it holds some of last year's growth on it, I can normally expect to get some good flowers on it the following spring. So mm. there you go. Mm. Okay, so then we're talking zonal denial. So like an obvious one is tropical, subtropical to mm. temperate or Mediterranean. But then there are things in the other direction. Oh, yes arid things coming into a more moist yeah. environment because often desert plants do have cold winter minimums 
but no moisture. Yeah, so they, it keeps them dry. So that can be one of the things you can utilise to grow plants from those sort of environments is to perhaps pot grow them, mm. have them under the eaves of the house, somewhere where you can moderate the excessive uh, winter moisture that you might get in your area. Mm. And I guess that in a similar sense, it also goes for high alpines with yes. heat. Yes. You know, so if I want to grow Swiss alpine gentian or edelweiss or any of those sort of high alpine plants, mm. they're a struggle in our hot summers. So mm. again, it's a matter of either placing them appropriately in the garden yeah. or growing them in pots so that you can move them around at different seasons to give them the, the optimum chance of survival. Okay, well, I think there is more denial for us to explore. Oh yes, let's go and have a look at a few more of my, <laughs> my I think I'm winning at the moment type plants. Okay, zonal denial, Stephen. Yes, well. What zone are we in? Brazil, which of course is not, at least most of it, very much like Mount Macedon. Mm. So the climber up above us here, growing on the, on the wall there, uh, I got years ago from one of the Melbourne Botanic Gardens plant sales. Yes. It had its name, Heteroterus glabra. Mm. And on the list it said subtropical Brazil. Uh, <laughs> and you thought, that sounds great yeah, for Mount Macedon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, what I thought was, I'd like to try that plant out, see whether it is hardy enough to cope with my climate mm. and also interesting enough to keep growing because I had no sense of what it did and I thought I was making a potentially one-off donation to the Melbourne Botanic <laughs> Gardens by buying it. So I bought it, planted it here and lo and behold it's actually taken off really well. The first year when it went into winter it shed all its leaves and it didn't look like one of those things that naturally sheds its leaves so I mm. thought oh here we go I've lost it. Mm. Um, but come spring it shot into leaf again uh, and off it went and I think within about 18 months two years it was producing its tiny little yellow flowers mm. and its lovely red winged seeds mm. and I suddenly had a plant that obviously was going to cope quite well so it denied its zone mm. uh, and it was worth the effort because I've actually ended up with a very commercially worthwhile plant that will cope with my climate because I was prepared to be experimental and push outside of my zone. There you go. And although it is now awesome, there are still some flowers and some yep. seed pods, so we'll try and get a close up of those. Yep. And we've actually shot this creeper in our unusual climbing video, which yep. we'll link. And I think we had more footage of its leaves and colors yep. in that film. I think we did. Film. Yep. Now, there was something else. Oh yes, this um, is something that, I am about to try my uh, denial. Denial. <laughs> I've got a sense I've probably uh, sentenced it to death. But anyhow, mm. uh, I always figure if I'm not spending more on something than I would on a half decent meal out, it's worth a try. Okay. Now, this is an Australian native plant, yes. uh, commonly known as a Queensland waratah. And actually, there is a picture. Yeah, of its stunning red flowers on it. Generic name is Aloxalan, and it's in the Proteaceae family. I've seen it growing in Melbourne in a sheltered garden, mm. but I have some doubts about it growing at Mount Macedon. But the foliage is so handsome. I just love these great big intricate leaves. Mm. And of course, if it ever does flower, it will be a stunning thing to have. I don't care. I'm going to try. Okay. And that is the name of the game with zonal denial. You've exactly. got to give it a go. Yes. All and right. you do have to remember too, if you fail, you don't have to tell anybody and and the corpses can go into the compost. And if you succeed, you oh, can yeah, sell it. Yeah, or you can just be full of your own self-importance when you show it off to your friends. All right, let's go and look at more zonal denial. More denial, Stephen. Yes. This is actually a plant that features on one of our very early videos, in fact, yes. because last year or the year before this was in bloom and mm. Matthew got quite excited. This is actually an acanthus that comes from Ethiopia. It's a shrubby acanthus and it's quite frost tender. So again, once it's built up enough oomph in the root system and has a little bit of woodiness in the trunks, mm. then although it often gets hit to the ground, mm. uh, the following year it probably won't bloom for me. Mm. But I think its foliage is handsome enough that I'm prepared to have it in flower perhaps every couple of years yeah. uh, and enjoy the foliage the rest of the time. And it's a beautiful plant, albeit it's prickly. So again, oh, but the flowers are extraordinary. I'll drop a still in of it. So again, if you get a couple of successively mild mm. years, you'll get the blooms. Yeah. If you get the frost, you then have to have 
a couple of successive yeah. wild years yeah. to get the flowers. So that could be three, four years of that blooms. It could depending be. on most of the time I get flowers every second year, okay. uh, which is not too bad going. Mm. Uh, and of course, in a much milder climate, it would flower for you every year. Yeah. But I really think the verticality of it, the big leaves, uh, the textural quality of it is more than worthwhile having it in the garden it is for amazing. the length of time I, or the amount of time I have it in flower. Yeah. Uh, but there are some plants I grow in the garden that are in our zonal denial type group that I'm now pretty bored with because I don't get them to flower often enough so they survive and sometimes something surviving is not as good as something either thriving or dying mm. because then there's no indecision involved mm. but if I have something in the garden that I've had for some years keeps coming up every year keeps getting knocked back by the frosts doesn't have foliage that holds the plant up as a garden specimen the rest of the time mm. Then at some point I assess it and say, well, enough's enough. What is the point? Yeah, exactly. So I have plants like that too, and we may even engage with one I was gonna say, during this video. Maybe we should. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say is though, the leaves look like massive dandelions. Yeah. They are amazing. Yes. And you said it's Ethiopian. Yeah. Ethiopia has quite a varied climate so yeah. is this more mediterranean or subtropical subtropical i would say right. uh, and by the way it is acanthus uh, polystachia because we haven't mentioned the name mm. and we will link in the story that we did on it where you can go in and have a look at that as well if you oh, wish it is the resolution might be really bad so apologies yeah well we were <laughs> beginners back then so you know it's it's what it is but anyhow i think it's a fabulous plant it again it suckers like mad so it's not for the timid gardener um, i want a sucker Steve, yeah well all right well this will do well in melbourne oh yes it, it will probably eat you out of house and home in Melbourne but there you go okay. uh, but up here it suckers around a bit but it's reasonably easy to manage uh, as long as you put on welding gloves when you go in to deal with it <laughs> all right let's go and look at more zonal denial yep. <laughs> talk to me about denial Stephen all right well this is a plant that I've always loved and have planted and it survived and it keeps coming back every year yep but hardly ever flowers. Mm. And it's Plectranthus aclonii. Mm. And when it does flower, it normally flowers in the autumn. And we're now in high autumn. And so it should be a mass of lavendery blue flowers at this point in the year. Yep. And it ain't. Mm. So I've got to the point with it. I think I've flowered it probably only twice in the last seven or eight years. Uh, and even then, it just gets into bloom and then we get that autumn frost and it knocks it all down again. And so I have it for a very short time. If I was in a more frost-free environment, mm. it's a fabulous plant because it grows in shade. Like Melbourne. Yes. Maybe I need to take some, Stephen. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe I dig you up a clump of it and you can take it home so I'm not just composting the lot. But it's useful as a ground cover and as a foliage plant. Well, I was going to say, it looks like a foliage, mm. um, low light understory ground cover. Yeah, well, and it is, but when you know what it can do, mm. uh, and I've got, you know, I've got a whole backlog of plants I'm still trying to find homes for from the nursery. Yeah. I think I might keep a little bit of it right at the back of the border mm. and I'll start lifting it out of the front so that I can then replant with something else that might flower for me on a more regular basis. So where is this from? The Most of the showy ones, which I think includes this one, tend to be Southern African. Right. Uh, there's a whole range of Plectranthus from that part. Because when we went to Cranburn, the, um, the native um, home of the Royal Botanic Gardens here in Melbourne, there was an Australian Plectranthus, yes. which I didn't know, well, I knew that plant, but didn't know it was Australian, and yeah. it blew my tiny mind. But yeah. this one, however, is not. So is this, Subtropical or Mediterranean? Uh, I'd say again, it's probably subtropical more, but it is quite drought tolerant. I mean, mm. it grows in here where it gets very little water but and it likes the shade. So it's obviously an understory plant in its natural habitat, yeah. but it's just too cold sensitive. And although it survives the winters and comes back again every year, mm. Yeah, I'm just a bit tired of it, so we might be moving on from Plectranthus eclonii. Oh, there's lots of bird squawks. Oh, yes, yes, those cockatoos. That one. <laughs> Um, all right, on to the next moment of denial. Yes. Well, Stephen, maybe it's time for me to share my own story of climate <laughs> denial. <laughs> now, I don't know why, well, I do know why. I was in Brisbane um, and I went to the Botanic Gardens and I saw the Fraser Island creeper, which is... Tecamanthe hilii. Oh, so I'll drop in the picture that I took in the garden. An amazing creeper, which has these clusters of flowers. 
which don't look dissimilar to Lapigeria. I mean, well, to the uninitiated. <laughs> yes, you know, tubular, quite large, quite waxy, but a different texture. Anyway, I fell in love with it. So happens I was driving and saw a small nursery, mm. a small independent one, which always makes your eyes glisten. Oh, yes, I always get excited. <laughs> popped in, and they had one, just one. Now, this was in Queensland, a plant raised in Queensland, which is subtropical, tropical. Yep. I, now, you're able to take plants into Victoria, into this state. Yeah. So I bought it, took it on as hand luggage, bought it home thinking, I can make this plant survive. So <laughs> I took it to Melbourne, and this was in spring. So it had spring and summer All right. to yep. acclimatize. Put it in a pot, not in the best spot because I'm renting while we're renovating. So it's in dappled light, but mm -hmm. outside. But it's flowered twice so it's grown through three winters survived the winters and it's oh. bloomed for two years my flowers aren't as aren't as bright as the ones in queensland i don't think it's getting enough sun yeah probably if, not if i can make it live long enough until we move it can go into hopefully a better environment so i'm pretty pleased because everyone says that creeper cannot survive melbourne winters well i have to say if you get it to do well in melbourne i want one and i'm going to try it up here no, um, no frost even no yeah. frost. <laughs> well i have to say i have got some things in the garden here that shouldn't be here in fact because of the same reason well let's go and look at some of those yes what a good idea stephen all right, Matthew. Tropical denial. This is definitely a zonal denial plant. Yeah. Uh, this is a plant I would have known years ago as Philodendron salome. Mm. It's now in something else, Thormatophyllum or something or another, Bipinatophyta. That's uh, it. Yeah, something like that. Now, if this was growing in a garden in Sydney, this would have leaves about that big, and it would be, uh, at the age this one is, it would probably be about three metres tall, taking over a whole garden. Yeah. This one's been in the garden here for 20-odd years, and all I can say of it is it's healthy and it's survived. And I had a monstera growing in basically the same aspect in here. The first winter it got whipped out by the frost. Mm. So this plant has turned out to be much hardier than I thought, albeit I've planted it in a very sheltered spot. The frost can't get in here, but it does get very cold mm. uh, and the plant has survived. So it may not be the world's best specimen of its type, mm. but I think I can take some credit for actually having it to survive at all. And like a curious thing, some subtropical or even tropical plants can take the cold as long as they're not wet. Yeah. And this is both wet and cold. Yes, it is rather. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I can feel quite smug about having grown one at all. But if I really wanted a good one, I'd probably move to Melbourne or Sydney. Mm. There you go. Well, I think it looks beautiful. And... It's got a beautiful new leaf and it's kind of been contained, so it's kind of perfect for the spot it's in. Well, it probably is, but, you know, it is really quite a runt and I know there'll be people <laughs> out there that'll go, Stephen, you call that a philodendron? And, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> More denial, Stephen. Yes. Not well, a river in Egypt. <laughs> yes. Well, this is zonal denial taking it to a slight extreme. Mm. This is actually one of the tropical conifers. Uh, Agathus morii from New Caledonia, believe it or not. And we have a video about tropical New Caledonian mm, conifers, conifers yeah. which we made at the Melbourne Botanic Gardens. We'll link that below. Yes. Now, the Agathus are an interesting genus. There's a couple, there's three species in Australia. There's a handful of species in New Caledonia, and there's a number of them that go up through the islands. There's some in Fiji and Vanuatu. There's also some sort of up through New Guinea and up through the Malay Peninsula. Mm. Can't remember exactly how many species they reckon there are out there, but it's probably somewhere in around about the 15 to 20 species worldwide. Yeah. New Caledonia has quite a number, so it's probably the epicenter uh, for the genus. And I really shouldn't be growing Agathus morii at Mount You Massive. shouldn't be growing no. it, Stephen, right? Yeah. Now, this is quite a valuable tree. It's really hard to get. So when I take zonal denial to the extent that I plant something quite valuable, I do have to hold my breath for quite a few years. Uh, now, this one's been in four years. Yeah. It's now two and a half metres tall-ish. It has had a little bit of frost damage on it over the last couple of years. It didn't get any this last winter, but it's been planted in a very sheltered little spot with lots and lots of trees around it, mm. because often these in the wild are emergent trees anyway. They grow up through a, a forest and eventually erupt out into the light above. Yeah. So I'm trying to give it a habitat not dissimilar to its native one. Because the agathus are very skinny, upright trees, it's never going to take up any room, so I don't care how big it will get, mm. although they can get pretty big. Probably not for your little tiny terrace house garden, but there you go, mm. I'll sell you one one day. 
But this one has done really well and my plan is it will survive once it gets big enough. Mm. So unlike some of the other things that get frosted back and come back again, this mm. couldn't cope with that sort of treatment. So I've got to try and keep it in reasonable health until it gets up to a height where its main leader is above where the frost settles because frost, the worst of the frost tends to settle down to ground level. Mm. So the most damage will be down around ground level. Once this has got a nice big solid trunk under it, the frost is unlikely to have any impact on that, mm. but it could have impact on the foliage around it. So mm -hmm. uh, once it gets tall enough, I'm hoping my Agathus morii will flourish at Macedon. And how old is this? How long has it been in the ground? It's been in the ground about four years now. Yep. When I planted it, it was about chest height. So it's, you know, yeah. it's grown reasonably well. Um, I'm sure in a warmer climate, it would have grown far faster than it has, yeah. but it's in good health. It's foliage is in good nick. It has got no damage shown on it at the moment. Of course, we haven't had our first autumn frost yet, but I think it's doing really well. And I'm just hoping I'm not getting smug about it because that's when we become unstuck. <laughs> Well, it's a curious thing too. We won't go into too much detail because we did in our other video, mm. but it's such an odd prehistoric, well, it is prehistoric. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. Now, talking of zonal denial, mm. you have a theory which I trot out all the time, mm. which relates to these trees. Yes. Tell our viewers yeah. the Stephen Ryan theory <laughs> of cold survival. Yeah, now just remember it's a theory. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, these are very ancient trees mm. and they will have been through possibly several glaciations or ice ages and in context new caledonia where this is from mm. has never been submerged no so, so it's, it's been yeah. above the water for all of these successive yeah. uh, ice ages so my theory is that these trees developed a fair bit of cold hardiness during the ice ages i don't know how cold it got on new caledonia back then mm. funnily enough i wasn't around mm. but it must have got substantially colder than it is today and so i think there might be a bit of inherent cold hardiness in some of these really ancient new caledonian plants because mm. i've planted a few more modern plants from new caledonia in the garden here and they've been wiped out first decent frost yeah. so I just wonder whether these things because of their ancient lineage actually have some usefulness about hardiness well a very nice theory Stephen Rose yeah, yeah. and hopefully somebody can <laughs> confirm or deny it for me but anyhow it's my theory and I'll stick by it well yes now I can also add to our zonal denial in that I grow orchids I have an orchid channel which I'll mm. link now, um, Australia has native orchids, mm. and here in Victoria, we certainly have native orchids, but not a huge variety, no. M lots of terrestrial orchids. Um, however, there are a lot of tropical orchids that I'm able to grow outdoors in Melbourne, yeah. undercover, but they get very cold winter nighttime minimums. Yeah. But again, as we were talking about the philodendron, the thing that will kill those things is if they're wet and cold. Yes, and so, the frost is sitting on them. So even though they're tropical, they can deal with it if they're not wet. And in yeah. Melbourne, in the city, we don't get frosts. In no. the inner city, it rarely gets to sort of two to three degrees um, centigrade. So the high 30s, low 40s Fahrenheit. Yeah, so quite mild. Quite mild, and a lot of things really thrive and seem to like it too. Mm. We would love to know what your zonal denials are. So if you've mm. managed to get something that is thriving counterintuitively in your environment, do let us know in the comments below. Yeah. And in fact, in England, they do tend to have a post-mortem every spring about what things have come through their winters uh, when they have a particularly bad one. Mm. And it is often quite interesting what things actually make it through and mm. what things in fact don't. Yeah, and actually look, tetrapanax being one of them um, that you yep. often see in tropical gardens in Britain, surviving, not surviving. Yes, yes, it's winters. one of those borderline -y things in, in England. I mean, I see it as pretty tough here. Yeah. Uh, so it comes through my winters quite well. And of course, uh, lots of gardeners in America use tetrapanax in cooler to colder climates. Mm. They just become more deciduous uh, mm. and they seem to still come through the cold quite well. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there you go. So there's one of my new Caledonian beauties. There you go. Stephen, Denial, yes. the river has run dry. It is time to end. Yes, I have to say it won't end for me though from the respect of still pushing the zonal denial thing because there's lots and lots of plants out there that I'm determined to have a go at. Me too, I have to say me too. I don't know what it, why, what is this? It's like what? some inherent 
It's a gardening thing. Okay. Gardeners all want to grow the things that they shouldn't. Uh, people in tropical climates want to have Japanese maples. We down here want to have tropical plants like frangipanis and goodness knows what else. It's just the way we are. Mm. Now, if I was a really wealthy person, I'd have my tropical garden in the tropics and I'd have my cool climate garden down here. Mm. I can't do that. So I'm trying to bring a little bit of the tropics into less than tropical Macedon. Or you could build yourself an enormous conservatory. Yeah, well, when we become rich and famous, let's go for that one. <laughs> OK, well, I hope you've enjoyed our tales of zonal denial. And if you want to know what we're denying next week, you'll have to hit subscribe. We post every Friday. Yes, and don't forget to send me questions for our Monday shorts. Mm. Tell me where you're from and ask the question, and I'm very happy to try and answer it for you. Maybe even about zonal denial, Stephen. Why not indeed? Let's just push the boat out. Anyway, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye all.